very warm welcome to our biology class today in this video we are going to understand about prokaryotic cell before start with the lecture i would like to request you all if you not yet subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and write your valuable comments they are really encouraging me to do so as i told today we are going to understand regarding prokaryotic cell but if i start to teach you directly the prokaryotic cell then most of the students are unable to understand what these prokaryotes so because of that first we will try to understand the basic concepts related to the prokaryotes students you might be know this initially there were no earth even there is a no galaxy then the earth is got formed about 4.5 billion years ago but whenever the earth is formed that earth was completely burnt there is no any organisms on that earth there is no water such that the earth is which is formed initially iron slowly whenever earth started to become solidified because of decreasing the temperature then even it leads into the rain rain begins on the earth for the first time then whenever the rain begins on the earth that rain water started to collect in a depressed area and whenever a rain water running on the surface of towards the depressed area it started to collect different type of chemicals so those chemicals are started to collected in this water then what happens those whatever the chemicals are there they started to react with each other and then the first time life was what appeared on the earth that was in the form of coacervates when it was 4 billion years ago means after the formation of earth about 500 million years there was a no life then slowly life is got appeared on the earth and that was in the form of coacervate i whatever these coacervates are there these are keep on evolving i first time cellular form of life is appeared about 2000 million years ago that whatever the life appeared in the form of cell that what we are learning today in this class in the form of prokaryotes i hope by this you comes to know that prokaryotes are the one appeared on the earth for the first time in the form of cellular life then these prokaryotes only keep on evolving into the different higher organisms and these are only evolved into the eukaryotic cell what i told the students about 2000 millions years ago life is got appeared in the form of cell and that life was in the form of prokaryote pro means initial karyot means the nucleus you can look at the nucleus of this there is no nuclear membrane surrounding to this dna in this the dna is naked without nuclear envelope but later on what happened the nuclear envelope is developed surrounding to the dna the dna got accumulated inside the nucleus and that what we call the those cells as a eukaryotic cell eu means the advanced karyot means the nucleus means advanced nucleus having organisms they are the eukaryotes even we are also eukaryotes only based on this we used to classify the cells into the two types what are those two types one is prokaryotic cell and second one is eukaryotic cell what is there in the prokaryotes there is no nuclear envelope dna is just simply present inside the cytoplasm 
but in eukaryotes dna enclosed inside nucleus and listen carefully students in the year of 1969 one of the scientist r h whitaker he classify all the living organisms into the five kingdoms what are those five kingdoms kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom planty and kingdom animalia do you know that whatever the kingdom monera is there all that kingdom is included organisms those are the prokaryotes only and the kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom planty and kingdom animalia they are all made up of by eukaryotic cell we are belonging to the kingdom animalia it means that whatever the cells are there in our body all those cells are have nucleus of course there are some exceptions are there for example rbc matured rbc do not have nucleus i listen out of this whatever eukaryotic organisms are there some of them are made by the single cell we call them as an unicellular organisms you are learning regarding amoeba paramecium and euglena they are all belonging into the kingdom protista only eukaryotic cells belonging into the kingdom protista then whatever fungi planty and kingdom animalia are there all they are the multicellular organisms i hope this is bringing some sense to you all i in a kingdom monera what have the organisms are included bacteria and mycoplasm i have told you about the mycoplasm students it is the smallest cell it is the cell or these are the organisms who are survive without oxygen and these are the organisms even cause disease to the plants and animals and even it includes pplo pleuro pneumonia like organisms and even it included blue green algae bga students all these whatever the organisms are there who are belonging into the kingdom monera all these are microscopic only if you want to study them if you want to observe them you must have to observe them under microscope only with your naked eyes they are unable to observe then these whatever the organisms are there they used to multiply very rapidly what is the reason for very rapid multiplication that what you will comes to know later on and out of these organisms some of them are very useful for example the one lactobacillus is the organism which will helps in converting the milk to the curd it is a very useful benefited organisms and even there are the several such organisms we are using for preparation of the alcohols also but some of them are very harmful they cause a disease to the plants and animals also i hope this particular information has brought you some sense to understand about prokaryotes and eukaryotes and today in this class we are going to understand about these prokaryotes by taking an example of bacteria let us move ahead to understand about the bacteria in detail now to know the characteristics of prokaryotes say this is what one of the bacteria is here this bacteria have a plasma membrane and inside to the plasma membrane there is a presence of fluid that fluid what we call it as a cytoplasm listen students plasma membrane and cytoplasm is similar even in prokaryotes and as well as you know eukaryotes there is no any much difference yes followed by this plasma membrane all prokaryotic organisms are have one more layer it is called as cell wall 
is a glycopeptide made layer in some it will be very thick in some it is the very thin and outside to this cell wall there is a one more layer called as glycocalyx layer all these three layers together they form the unit and that what we call it as a cell envelope and based on the nature of cell envelope we used to classify the organisms into the different group to classify the bacteria we used to consider the two criteria one is difference in a cell envelopes and second one is how those are responding to gram spin i mean whatever the cell envelope you have observed right now which is made up of the plasma membrane cell wall and the glycocalyx layer it is varies from organisms to organisms we used to find that the two different type of arrangements are there in these layers what are the arrangements then observe here there is plasma membrane and next to the plasma membrane there is a presence of cell wall and next to the cell wall there is a presence of glycocalyx layer are you observe any space in between these layers no space and almost all these layers are thick only such type of some organisms are there and certain other organisms are even they have a plasma membrane followed by the plasma membrane there is a presence of cell wall in between the plasma membrane and cell wall they have a some gap some space that space is called as periplasm and next to the cell wall they have one more layer of a plasma membrane and even by in between that cell wall and plasma membrane second plasma membrane there is one more space that is even called as an periplasm and after this there is one more layer that is glycocalyx yes are you observing the thickness of cell wall and glycocalyx layer in both these two different type of organisms yes on the basis of that only we will classify the organisms into the two groups by considering the difference in the cell envelope if the glycocalyx layer is thin then we call that layer as a slim layer if the glycocalyx layer is thick then we call it as a capsule got it so if the glycocalyx layer is a thin then we call it as a slim layer means some of the bacteria are have a slim slim layer and some of the bacteria are have a capsule got it and next to that we are observing one more very important layer the cell wall what is the role of it this cell wall is the one which is made up of the glycopeptide it is the layer which will determine the cell shape we already learned in the previous video what all the different shapes of bacteria are there bacillus bacteria are there coccus bacteria are there yeah vibrio bacteria are there spirulo bacteria are there all that shapes are going to be determined with the help of this cell wall only and even the cell wall is providing a strong structural support to prevent the bacteria from collapsing or rusting bacteria will not get collapse or even they are not going to get brushed also because of very strong cell wall is present in those but that cell wall is also going to vary from organisms to organism some organisms are have a very thick cell wall and some of them are have very thin cell wall is there and of course you might be observing that both the differences where i have shown the complete cell envelope of two different bacteria now listen carefully we can able to classify the bacteria even on the basis of how they are responding to the gram spin one of the scientist called as a gram he prepared a dye 
that dye is used to classify the bacteria. How? How we can able to do that staining then? To do that, you need to take a slides, glass slides, and upon them transfer some bacteria. And after that, the one stain which is prepared by the gram that you need to put it on them, gram stain. You pour the gram, some of the gram stain and you need to wait for some time. And after that, if you wash that stain under the running water, you will find that some of the bacteria are becoming violet in color and some of them are become pink in color. So this is what the way how they are responding to the gram strain. If they are becoming violet in color, we consider them as a gram positive bacteria. And if they are becoming pink in color, then we consider them as a gram negative bacteria. Again, the question arises why they are becoming violet in color and why some of them are becoming pink in color. Reason is thickness of cell wall. Some bacteria have a very thick cell wall and this thick cell wall is helps in holding pigments of gram stain so they are going to become an violet in color. But the bacteria, those who have a very thin cell wall, in them what happens? That gram stain is going to wash out whenever we are washing them under the running water. And in that way, we used to classify them into the two different groups. Okay, thank you students. This is what about the cell wall and types of different bacteria we have studied in this video. In the next video, I am going to explain how mesosomes are present, what all the different mesosomes are there and what is their function related to the prokaryotic cell we will discuss in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Please share to your friends and like and write your valuable comments. They are really encouraging me. Thank you once again.